Grade 11 English Home Language Lesson 21 Topic Language Dictionary and Thesaurus Turn to Lesson 21 in the Learner's Workbook. This lesson will include an individual activity with baseline assessment, self-assessment and formative assessment. Integration Learning how to use a dictionary and thesaurus effectively will help you with all your subjects and life in general. Prior learning, you will have used dictionaries previously. Lesson Overview In this lesson, you will demonstrate dictionary skills. Identify and explain the meanings of words and use them correctly in a wide range of texts. Hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Janet. Today we'll be, we will be discussing LO4, but before we begin, we'd like you to please collect all your dictionaries and keep it next to you because we will be using it later. Let us turn our attention to LO4, language. The learner is able to use language structures and conventions appropriately and effectively. Your assessment standards include identify and explain the meaning of words and use them correctly in a wide range of texts. Words are very important because mm. we need words to spell, we need words to read. So that's why we need to concentrate on how to spell correctly. Right, and remember with words we're also looking at vocabulary. Remember one of the critical outcomes is to make you into thoughtful, critical readers. And the only way you're going to be that is if you get in touch with words and one of the ways to do that is obviously through your reading, through dictionaries, through discussing words, through looking up words, through focusing on words quite consciously. You need to apply knowledge in an increasing range of spelling patterns, there are rules for it and conventions for new and or complex words and compile a personal spelling list. So Mary, well, how good a speller are you? Uh, not that much. I always have to refer to mm. a dictionary. So it's important mm. for me to spell correctly as an educator in language. Mm. And I found, I don't know about you as grade 11s and Mary you, that when I spell, I want to look at it. I'll say, how do you spell? And I'll write it down a few times in different ways. And I look at that spelling and I choose the one that looks the best. Because I spell visually. I spell through my eyes. And I find that over all these years of teaching, yes, seeing Janet. so many wrong spellings has made me quite insecure as a speller. So I know, oh, I'm not sure of that word, and I reach for a dictionary. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about how do you spell? Do you spell through your ears? Do you spell through your eyes? And then you need a strategy that will help you become a better speller. Janet, you know, sometimes I have to listen to the word. So listening to the word in terms of either syllables or f uh, the way the word is spelled, mm. the way mm. I listen to the sound of the mm. word as well. So, so you're that spelling does also through your ears? Through my ears, mm. yes. And then I go to the mm. dictionary when mm. it doesn't look right at mm. all. Mm. Also, you need a concerted strategy to say to yourself, what am I doing about my spelling? So you need to make sure that you know which words you are not comfortable with and therefore the words that you're going to look up. You then need to look them up and you need to learn them. Now there are different ways of doing this, but one way that you might like to follow is by using a spelling log. So let's say you've spelt the word gadget like that and your teacher says no You've got the right sound. You've got the j sound. So you've got the right phoneme, but you've got the wrong grapheme. Let's just stop and talk about phonemes and graphemes for a moment. You should know this root, and that root refers to sound. And you should know that root, which refers to writing. So what we want you to become more aware of is the sound of the word and then which letters we use to write that word. So you've got the right phoneme, you've got the j sound, but you've got the wrong grapheme. So then you go to a dictionary and look it up 
and you get gadget. Now, what you can do in your spelling log, this word must now go into your spelling log, which is your own private book. So you might like to get one of those, those little um, wire bound ones, you know, that you can buy fairly cheaply at a supermarket. That's going to be your spelling log. And you go over just the letters that you got wrong. Over so that in your spelling log, it'll look like that and you'll see, yes, that's the word that I misspelt. But I got those letters right. These are the letters I got wrong. So it comes out almost as if it is in bold. Then you go over it and over it and over it, and then eventually cover it and try to write it again. In other words, it's an alternative to when teachers say, write the correct spelling out three times or 30 times. You are going over it, but instead of writing the same word over and over and over again, and the letters therefore that you know, you're going over the letters that you don't know. And in your spelling log, that's how it will appear. So you might like to write it in pencil and go over it in a different color pen so that you can see which are the letters that I was getting wrong. Then you practice it. And obviously you're going to go to your spelling log every time you misspell a word. My grade nines, for example, were asked to spell pajamas and gave me things like P-I. So again, this word will go into your spelling log. You will correct it and then go over the Y and over the Y and over the Y until it's nice and bold and there's your second word in your own spelling log. So that's one way of trying to improve your spelling. But I am looking certainly at a visual spelling, Mary, rather than, than spelling it through yes. your ears. Yeah, no. But then the majority of people are visual, visual spellers. Yes, mm. they are. Right, now we're going to look at the next assessment standard and it reads as follows. Use a wide range of abbreviations and acronyms correctly. I will explain different abbreviations and I will give you examples. Abbreviations are shortened formed of words, for example, doctor, mister, missus, and so on. Sometimes they are followed by a full stop, Janet, but in modern, there's a modern tendency that um, we don't use the full stop after doctor and missus any longer. Um, you have to, in some cases, you have to, doctor doesn't have a full stop. But for professor, F-P-R-O-F, you have to have, use a full stop. We can see there that the abbreviation doctor, Mr. and Mrs. We have abbreviation for etc. and example. We remove the full stop from southwest, compass points, east and south. And the names of organizations are pronounced as words. For example, NATO, SWAPO, and AZAPO. In South Africa, the abbreviations of names of political groupings or parties, governments, government departments, and parastatals do not have a full stop. ANC, CP, the DP, and SAA. They do not have full stops. For example, some people, the word brazia, brazier, I don't know how the pronunciation, there we have a problem with my pronunciation. In some cases, people talk about a bra. Sometimes people have size 38 double D size bras. Words like refrigerator. In modern times, we do not talk about the refrigerator, we talk about the fridge. And from the word perambulator, which may sound an unusual word, but in the old past, in the past, people would talk about a perambulator, and that is basically just a pram. So those are just the abbreviations that we have used.